Hello, and welcome to the Active Atom Educational Series. Part 3B, Assembling a Precision Machine Spindle. Well, that sounds kind of handy, but what the hell is a 3B? <laughs> well, today we're going to be assembling a uh, Levin open style headstock. Oh, the open style headstock is my favorite. Oh, it's mine too. And let me show you, this is, this is one that's already been assembled. And we rebuilt this one, I guess, a few years ago. And so this is what it looks like. This particular one's actually a decollet spindle. And today we're going to actually be working on a WW or 8mm collet spindle. And what's really interesting is the two headstocks are identical. So if you're doing a, you know, a D collet or a WW collet, this section applies to both. Yeah, yeah parts are relevant with yourself. Yeah. Right? But my favorite thing is, is that there's two bearings in one, but that the pulley's in the center. Yeah. So that's just me. And I like it that it's, 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 it's in the center, not dragging on at one end or the, or the other. It's just one of those things. Yeah, it's just a nice style. Yeah. Always liked it. And, um, and this fancy little house. Yeah. <laughs> and this is what's really interesting. Uh, in regards to the different collet types, you know, between the D and the WW, okay, the spindle itself, the external dimensions are identical. Oh. That's what's really surprising when I first found out about it. Uh, and it's identical. The only thing in regards to the spindle that's different is the bore. And that is it. So the, the outside, and what that means is because the outside dimensions are the same, that means the bearing caps, the felts, everything are, are identical between the two spindles. Well, that makes it nice. Yeah, That's so it was, really, it was really smart of them to do that. Okay. Yeah, so, um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. But really important is before you continue watching this section, we want you to watch part 3A. And that one's focused on the assembly of the Levin accessory spindle. It, it is, and it's where we did a lot more details about processes we don't want to repeat six six plus times. Right, we don't want to keep doing the same thing over Put and over again. That. And just, you know, like, for instance, the greasing of the bearings. Right. You know, where we use a syringe and, you know, and precisely inject the grease into the bearings. And the other thing... The, I think they will put the... Uh, can you snap the felts together oh, that's, in that one? That's right. Uh, we won't be doing that either. No, we already know they're section. clean. We already know they're how to install them. You watch 3A, you get to learn all that. Then you apply all that. Then you come watch the actual one in the series you want that re revolves closest to the kind of spindle you rebuild it. That's right. And that should put you in good shape. Yeah, exactly. Without having to look through hour after hour of video, you just get to get what you want. Exactly. Yeah, because we didn't, you know, nobody likes to see the same thing over and over no. again. So, so that's what we're going to be doing. So I think, um, oh, and supplies, you know, we won't be getting into tools and supplies because we cover that as well on 3A. Yeah. And they cover those tools and supplies cover every single model. It they do. Doesn't much matter. There'll be a little bit of change on the, uh, on probably on the barkers because they're bigger. Oh, sure. There's some tool adjusting right. here, but no, nah, we'll share that specifically in those videos. Exactly. Anything that's not part of, of the, anything that's not common to everything. Well, definitely be covered in each individual letter. Definitely. So this is going to be in the letter B. So it'll be anything pertaining to letter B. It'll be in here only. Yes, yeah, specific to the you open won't style. Find it, you may not find it in C and you won't find it in A or whatever have you. That's right. There, that's how we want to make sure you understand. There okay. you go. Great. Well, let's get started. All right, let's go do it. I'm so excited to be re-putting these back together. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Part 3B, Section 1, Parts Review and Belt Pulley Lesson. Watch how much I pay attention this time. Why would I need to do that, Patrick? Because I made a mistake, didn't I, years ago? Yes. Somebody didn't get the pulley lesson. Well, you know, this is really easy to do, and that's why we're going to focus on this section. Very important. Okay, and what we're going to do is... It's the only one in this circumstance. It's the only one that's trapped, I call it. I call this being trapped when you put something. <laughs> oh yeah, that's too, right. Yeah. yeah this... If you forget, you forget. It. it looks funny when there's no pulley when you're done. <laughs> yeah. I might, that's my hit. Okay. So, okay, what we're gonna show you right now is we're gonna show you all the parts required to assemble this headstock. 
And this is a good idea. If you're doing this rebuild procedure, you what you want to do is you want to gather all the parts you've cleaned and prepped and done all that work and you're ready to do this stage now. You want to lay all your parts out and make sure you have every part needed for this rebuild. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to be, you know, taking the bearings out of the packaging, oh boy. greasing them. No, because it's like a timer. It's almost act like it's glue drying. That's it's, right. I hate to say it so harshly, but it, once you've done that process, this really already needed to be done. So you you need, they, 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 it, it's time to start. And, and that's, yeah. I don't want them laying around any longer than possible. No, you're right. Because yeah, you don't want to grease your bearings and then let them sit. No. No way. That's a bad thing. Yeah, we want to so. get them put away as fast as possible. It's just, it's just, it's just a good practice. I mean, it's not saying right. that if you did something, oh, it's going to be horrible. And it's not necessarily, but you, you do increase your odds of a failure. Yeah. And okay, and what we're saying is, you know, let's say you've greased the bearings, you've set them aside and you're ready. Okay, I'm ready to install these on the spindle. But then during the assembly, you realize, wait, I'm missing a part. And that's a really bad situation, <laughs> you know, especially if you can't find yeah, the part. Panic attack. Yeah. So that's why that this is so critical before moving forward. Make sure all your parts can be found, you know, and laid out and, and, um, and they're in pristine condition. That's the other thing. Make sure... You know, you didn't have a part that skipped the cleaning process. So very smooth. Oh yeah, these parts look perfect. And I think we even bought a couple of replacement parts, but why don't we take a closer view? That'd be nice. Okay, that's better. Okay, just really uh, briefly, let's go through all the parts. Okay, we've got our main spindle shaft. Uh, we've got the belt pulley collar or spacer. We got the belt pulley that goes over the spacer. Uh, we've got your snap ring. You've got your belt pulley set screw. A very special one. Yeah, very special one. And we're actually gonna go through that shortly. Oh, great. We got the slinger. We got the slinger cover. We got the spindle nut. We got the spindle nut fastener. Very important part. Yeah, notice that we didn't put the fastener inside because when you install this spindle nut, you want to make sure that's out of We want the her nut. in her complete free state. That's right. Because, you know, it's so easy by accident to have this tighten in the spindle. And if that's tightened and you're, you know, installing it, that can really mess up these nice threads on and the spindle. Yeah, because those nut threads are just as fine as they look. He's got it better here. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, see, look how, look how fine those threads are. Yeah, you don't want to be stressing those out, really. Yeah, so very easy to damage. Okay. Okay, you've got the outside bearing caps right here. Uh, yeah, this is for the front. So we've got the front bearing cap, the rear bearing cap. We've got the two internal bearing caps. Okay, we're just real quick. Okay, these are the ones that install internally right here between the belt pulley. Yeah, this is the only time this occurs is on this spindle. Right? That's that's yeah. correct. Okay, and these are press fit, so you'll notice there's no threads. Okay, we've got the... Okay, so for these internal bearing caps, we've got the retainer ring that holds in the felt rings right here. And then on the rear bearing cap, we've got the retaining ring and the felt ring. Okay, and this is kind of interesting. Um, these two parts are actually brand new parts from Levin. The older ones just, they, they got too old. We, uh, I think you didn't like the threads. The threads are kind of damaged. They're just tired. Worn. She's a really old spindle. Very old. So she's tired. And she, you know, the aluminum parts would be the ones that are a little more susceptible, especially things like threads. That's a soft aluminum. That's right. For, yeah, these are soft aluminum. And it's a fine aluminum on top of that. And Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So these two parts are brand new from Levin. So thankfully, Levin still carries these. And this is what's really interesting. So we got these from Levin, and as we expected, the rear one, you know, didn't come with the felt ring or the retainer clip. So these are actually from the older bearing cap. Because, mm -hmm. you know, they don't, uh, Levin doesn't have these felt rings anymore. Those are awfully nice and cleaned up, though. Yeah, somebody cleaned them nicely, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but this was a nice surprise. When we received the front one from Levin, it had a brand new felt ring and retainer clip already pre-installed. Yeah, that's not like them. No. <laughs> so it was like a free little gift. Yeah, don't tell nobody. <laughs> yeah, don't tell them. I don't want it back. 
<laughs> ah, just funny. <laughs> yeah, just funny. So that's why it's already installed because it's brand new. So that was nice. Okay, so those are all the parts, I think. Oh, and then obviously we've got the housing. So be sure you have all these parts. Okay, the thing I wanted to mention was... Okay, so here's the spindle. Okay, so later when we install the two angler contact bearings, they're going to be as a pair together in That's the front. Right. And then we've got the deep groove bearing in the rear. So when we first install the two angler contact bearings, we then install the shaft right here. Okay, I should actually... Okay, let's see. Let's see if I can get this in real quick. Let me move these. Okay, so remember, so we've got the bearings in the front already. Yeah, in okay. theory, uh huh. Yeah, so we're gonna then install the spindle through here. Okay, so we already have this collar in place. Yes. Oops. And then, you know, we're gonna push it through like this. Okay, just to give you an overall picture of how it looks. Okay, but there's something really important when you do this procedure. So, when you first put the spacer on, Okay, and when you bring it through, before you do anything else, make sure you'll notice, first of all, that there's a hole in the spindle. And that's very important because the set screw for the belt pulley, you'll notice... Yeah, that's not the collet key hole like we're familiar with with other spindles here. That's right. It looks like a collet key hole. Yeah, it's not. That's but, up in front there. Yeah, and you'll notice is this uh, set screw... They machined it so it fits perfectly in this hole. I mean, it really goes right in that hole. Yeah, That's really. a mistake that I'm referring to. Yeah, and see, this is what happens is when, so, so people, you know, they install the spacer, they install, you know, uh, the belt pulley, and then, you know, they put the set screw in. They aren't paying attention to make sure the set screw inserts into the spindle. Yeah, because it had to go through the pulley, through, through this through this whole open hole in the sleeve, but it still has to go through there and then hit that spindle. That's it right. It has to hit that hole in that spindle. Yeah, so you got you got to really pay attention. So you've got the spindle hole, you got the hole in the spacer, and then plus you got to install the belt pulley. And that's why you don't want to install the set screw yet because see, you're going to install the pulley with a tight fit, so I don't want to do it all the way. But see, when you install this, you may even need to get a flashlight you need to line up sure. that set of three holes there, basically. Yeah, three holes. So you've got the hole in the belt pulley, the hole in the, in the spacer, and then the hole in the spindle all need to be aligned. So that way, when you then insert the set screw for the belt pulley... This all becomes one piece. It all becomes one piece. And that's what... See, it's really nice because once the set screw locks into that hole, see, the belt pulley is not going to move at all. That's right. One, one block. Yeah, so very important. See, and the mistake people make is they aren't paying attention. So what they end up doing is they miss the hole. So the set screw is applying pressure it on just the outside. Gouges right around that cylinder. Right. Yeah, so what they do is they make marks. Yeah. Plus, uh, the belt pulley is going to spin. Yep. So you've got these spinning marks. Oh, it's just a disaster. And it makes all these marks on this nice spindle. So that's why you got to be really careful. And that's a highlight from this spindle rebuild right here. Yeah, it really is. This is a highlight. And um, so make sure when you're doing this, you're, you're going to feel, you know, you'll feel when it locks in because you're going to feel that the belt pulley still yeah, a little loose. Yeah, just take loose. your time. Tighten, you know, tighten it a little bit. Back it off. Tighten it back. And you'll feel it. It'll go in that little hole. All of a sudden, it'll just drawn right on in. Yeah. And you'll know it. Yeah, and you'll notice because you'll still be able to move the pulley back and forth just a teeny bit in that little play, but... It won't move further than that it. because it's already locked in. And then you can just tighten it really so snug. So it really has just little to no movement. And you'll know that's it. You got one your solid piece there. That's right. Beautiful. So really important, that step. So I think that's it. I think we've covered everything. So I think we're ready to do the bearing installation. Fantastic. Okay, we're about ready to go off camera and do the greasing of these of these bearings, but you know we've already done them in part three A, so we're not going to repeat that here. Right. There are some differences though, so let's turn it over to Patrick and let's let's get a little uh, little difference understanding before we go off camera. Okay, let me show them the bearings we're going to use first. Okay, so we, okay we've got a total of three bearings. We've got our angler contact bearings. 
And these are part number 7003. And these are from uh, FAG. Uh, they're Barden Corporation. <laughs> I think they're part of another bearing company. Nowadays. Another merger. I yeah. yeah, I didn't know that either. <laughs> yeah, guy, all these mergers. Okay, and then for the precision deep groove bearing, remember, this class of bearing is also an ABEC7. As or, here. As here. So remember, the precision class has to match on the deep groove bearing the same as the angular contact bearings. So very important. And these are actually from... This uh, deep groove bearing is actually a 6003 and it's from IBC, made in Switzerland. So very good quality. And so this is, these are the bearings we're gonna be installing. And like Lance mentioned, we aren't gonna be showing you the greasing of these bearings because it's identical among all the 11 spindles. Just the quantity is gonna change, I believe. Yeah, just the quantities. So if we look at the, okay, this is the chart we've showed before. And this is from Barden. This came with the um, that uh, grease. Oh, this oh, here? here we have it right here. Yeah, this is that syringe of G46, the Kluber Isoflex MBU15 grease. That Very same important. thing, same same container, same everything we use from uh, Part 3A. Yeah, this grease actually you'll see us use this grease on every spindle we rebuild. All 11 spindles, the Barker spindles we're going to be doing. So. Yeah, so very important. We'll be using this on all our spindle rebuilds that you see us do. Great. Okay, so this came with it, and this is really nice. You know, they gave you a little quick instructions. But what's really important is this chart. Yes. See? Okay, so okay, so what we want to look at is, okay, we're using series 100 bearings. And, okay, remember the part number is 7003. So we want to look at the last two numbers, which is the size number, so it'd be 03. So what they're telling us is for this bearing, they want us to use 0 0.50 cc amount of grease. Which is the same as 0 0.50 milliliter. Exactly. There's that's, a lesson. Yeah, we mentioned that before, that cc, which is cubic centimeter, is the same thing as a milliliter. Yeah. milliliter. Yeah. Yeah. So I just don't, wanted to remind everybody, I, yeah. that's my big lesson I learned. <laughs> exactly. Because see, here on this chart, it's CC, but on the syringe, you'll notice it's ML. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so don't panic. Yeah, so don't panic. So, okay, so we're going to be, so that's the only difference because when we, when we did the accessory spindle, we used a 0, 01, a 7001 bearing, and we used only half the amount. Yeah, smaller. You know, these yeah, are smaller. We're starting to get up a little bit larger here with the... Uh, Spindle diameters. There. That's right. Bearing diameters too. Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah, we just want to show that to you. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to prepare these bearings with grease. And when we're in, when we're ready to install these bearings on the spindle and complete this rebuild process, we'll be back. That'll be perfect. Part 3B, Section 2, Preparing Headstock for Spindle Assembly. Wow, I... Kind of came back from that greasing operation there, and I, I thought you baked me a cake. <laughs> yeah, it, is one, it does look like one of the little cake uh, covers, doesn't it? Yeah, I thought maybe you were yeah. doing something nice for me. <laughs> well, actually, this is really important. I should share it. Um, you know, it's, it's part of watchmaking ethics where, you know, if we aren't currently working on a part, like let's say we're working on a watch movement, and we're focused on like maybe a certain part, like the balance wheel or something, we're fixing a hairspring. You know, we just don't want the other parts to just sit in the open air. So in watchmaking, it's just it's just something that we always think about is covering our parts that we aren't currently oh, working on. Oh, those parts are so small. Yeah, and they're small too. You know, you don't want you don't want to lose any parts, but more important, you know, and even like if you want to take a lunch break, let's say you're working on a, a watch movement and you aren't completed with the job and you want to take a lunch break or maybe at the end of the day you didn't you couldn't finish the watch so you want to you want to continue it the following day well you want always want to cover your parts so that's what I did here you know it's just it's just the watchmaking in us where I've greased the bearings like we told you we would off camera and they look and, real good too yeah, I can see it yeah and mm -hmm. after I did that 
you know, I want to ensure to cover them because we don't want any dust or anything to get, you know, because like Lance has mentioned before, you know, once you grease or oil something, it acts like a magnet. That brings up a good point. You know, notice that that cover is placed on one of those laboratory grade Kim wipes yeah. that are lint free. That's it, right. This is like a little time capsule. This could sit like that for a very long time. In past videos, uh, we'll use uh, those blue shop towels. Right. But in this case, you'll notice we're using these lint-free uh, Kim wipes. On these really sophisticated jobs, right. this is just something we need to be doing. Yeah, because we can't have that paper towel lit. Nope. That'll, that, that'll get in the bearings, and that's going to be a really uh, big problematic problem. Very big. Yeah. But we're not really ready for that just yet, and that's why that cover remains on them, huh? That's We've got right. got something else going on here with my favorite headstock. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, so we need to install a few parts first on the headstock housing. The first thing we're going to do is we need to install the snap ring. And where the snap ring gets installed is it gets installed. Okay, this is the rear of the spindle right here. And this is the front of the spindle or the headstock, okay? And you'll see a little snap ring groove right here. So that's where we need to put the snap ring right here. And what this does is once this is snapped in, it's this along with the bearing cap that gets installed in the front that keeps those pair of angular contact bearings in place. It makes them, keeps them there and makes them behave. So That's they right. Don't, don't be wandering off on us. <laughs> That's right. Okay, and this only keeps them in place. It doesn't provide any preload or anything no. at all. Just keeps them tight and in place so they don't move. So that's, so that's why uh, we need to install the snap ring. Okay, after we install the snap ring, then we can install the internal bearing caps. And this is the only headstock or spindle we do that has internals. That's right. They're both always external. So they're always out here, say, and here and here. And this time they're yeah. very uniquely done. We had to come up with a really special way over the years to put those in. It wasn't the funnest thing we've ever done. That's right, and you'll notice on these there's no threads. They're actually press fits yeah. and they get press fitted about halfway, you know, to, and, and what's interesting is once the snap ring's in place, we basically push this until So that snap sits. ring has two functions. It's That's protecting true. the bearing going one way and the and little felt ring cover going the going other way. The other way. dust shield there. You're right. <laughs> and that's kind of nice because when you're pressing this in, there's no risk of pushing this in too far. Yeah, because... Because yes. unlike this one, okay, this is the one you got to be careful with when you press it in because you can press it in too far and it can go all the way into the, you know, into the housing right here. Now, our big goal is to have both of them extruding out into the center toward the uh, pulley. That's our goal, right? That's right. We don't want them flush even. We're just trying to get them in there secure, but sticking out ever so slightly and matching a little bit That's of a match right. from side to side. Yeah, we just have to eye it. The snap ring is going to dictate this side's flushness. That's right. It's not going to happen. So we're trying to match this side to this side. That's right. So we look uh, uniform there. And we do have, we actually change our methods on, on installing this and we'll share that when we get to this. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so let's do the snap ring first. Okay, what we're gonna use is snap ring pliers. If you notice, we're using the 90 degree tips. Okay, and that's really important because um, if you use the straight tips, it's very difficult come in from the inside or even from this side. And I really don't want these tools around those threads. Yeah. They're too so their threads aren't aren't wimpy. They're just too fine, and I don't want any bends and little nicks and things that are just going to cause trouble on the nut. That's right. Okay. 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 So where do you to install this? Okay. This is what you want to do. You'll notice on these snap rings, you'll notice there's a nice smooth side, and then there's this rough side. I call it rough, but it's the side that has the sharp corners. It's the non -st it's the stamping side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the down the the negative stamping side. Right. Is. And really important is you want that smooth side facing the inside. So that's where the bearings are going to rest on. Because you don't want the bearings to rest on the sharp side. Oh, in case good. there's any burrs or anything. Yes, it is. And it is sharper. Considerably different. There's no mistaking it. That's right. There isn't. Really easy to identify. Okay. Okay, so just like that. Oh, 
Oh, really nice. Yeah. In our case, we did not want to cause any trouble with the paint work. <laughs> That's right. So that was it. You know how they'll snap, you know how they can take off on you. <laughs> they can. <laughs> but that's perfect. I like it. Okay. That's in there really nice and solid. Okay, good. Okay, now what we'll do is we're gonna install this bearing cap first. Okay, you'll notice on these internal bearing caps, Okay, I did, as you can see, I've already installed the felt ring and the retaining ring. And using the same method, if you... Oh, that was covered in 3A. In 3A. Yes. Right, and you'll see the method we use to do it. Okay, and how I install these, I install these with the snap ring facing inside. Oh, interesting. Yes. Inward. Inward. Well, that'll keep it safely secured and won't pop apart. That might right. be not a bad idea. And it appears that's what Levin does, uh, so, you know, most of the time. I should say most of the time, not all the time. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. It's, yeah, it's okay. Okay. Give them a little start there, a little bit. Oh, actually, this, these, sometimes, okay, these are just press fit. And sometimes you can press them in with your fingers, just like I'm doing. Yeah, this one went in easy. And it's up against that snap ring. It's not going very far, so. That's right. Well, that was nice. Okay, that was lucky, because that doesn't always work that way. No. And the, it's not an easy press fit. You know, I'm, I am pushing pretty hard, you know, so it's in there. It's not going to fall out. Okay, no, that's good. Yeah, so that's exactly what you want to see, just like that. See, that's about halfway in. Nice. Now we got to get the other one to match. How close can we get? Okay, we're ready to install the second bearing cap. And what I like to do first is I like to get it started as best I can. And, oh, and remember, you know, again, you know, pay attention where I like to have the retaining clip facing the inside. You want to get that as level as you can. Don't get a kink going in there, start. Oh, yeah, that's a good point Lance is mentioning. Yeah, you need to start, you know, what Lance is saying is make sure that when you start this, make sure it's completely parallel with this housing. Because if it's crooked and when you press it in, it's going to press in crooked. So here, let me take a look at it. Oh, I think that's... Okay, you notice? Okay, so you can see it's parallel now. Let's see if I can get a better shot. Yeah, there. We go on the side. See, you know, you got to check both yeah, sideways. All the way around. Yeah, all around. Make sure it's completely parallel all around. Okay, there, I think that's good. Okay, the next step I like to do, this step is optional. What we like to do is we like to use a bearing cap on the other side when we're doing the press operation. Just because, you know, as you can tell, or we told you we repainted this really nicely and we don't want to ruin the nice paint job. So I like to use a bearing cap. But what's really important is if you, do this operation like we're doing with the bearing cap. Make sure you install the bearing cap all the way. See, what we're going to do is we're going to screw it in until this lip is hitting the housing because we don't want to put a lot of stress on the threads. That's right. Yeah, yeah these are real delicate threads, so we need all the, all the grip we can get. That's right. We're not applying that much pressure. It's just a good practice. We don't want yeah, to do that. Yeah, good practice. Okay, so then just snug. Okay, I think that's good. Oh, and I should mention at this stage, um, okay, this is especially true when when you've purchased new bearing caps like we have. Which we have, uh -huh. Yeah, it's really important that before you start the assembly process to do like a pre-install of these caps. And the reason being is because the threads are new, when you install these for the first time, you can get a lot of chips and fragments from the new threads. So it's really important, you know, so if these, especially if these are new, but you should also do it if these are used as well, because a lot of times it could be a lot of dirt and grease and chips in here. Yeah. You know, so it's nice to do a pre-install and then remove them and then just clean everything up. You have to clean it. Then the other thing that's been done here and you don't see is he can tilt here. These internal threads here, they, they, they've already been through a really fine wire wheel on a proxen, uh, little, little, uh, what do we oh, call Oh, the rotary it? tool. A little yeah. rotary tool, and I've already put it in there with a little small fine wire wheel, nothing aggressive. I've gone in and I've cleaned these threads, and then this has been cleaned, but because he's trying these caps right now, 
He's going to get fragments from that new aluminum in here. That's right. And before those bearings, which we've taken such great care of here yeah. on this nice mat, we're going to need... These aren't oiled yet, so we haven't even we haven't even put the oil film in here yet. Because That's right. Because we have put the caps, we're going to take them back out. We're going to make sure we clean all those fragments, the possible fragments. We don't know anything. Yeah, yet. we don't know. And even clean, re clean the bearing caps themselves as yeah. well. Yep. Yeah, and then then we're going to lightly put the little nye oil in here on both. Right. That's right. And then it's time for the bearing. And yeah. then we're safe. Yeah, remember as we preach, we use the nye oil throughout the assembly process. On and all the threads, everything. Yeah. And remember, we don't do it, we don't oil everything at once. We do it, you know, throughout the process. For reasons like this, where we have to Yeah. We have to clean these threads a little bit. That's right. Yeah. So we just wanted to mention that because before we started this, you know, we did do this pre-install process. You know, Lance re-cleaned the threads on yeah. both the housing on and the caps. And we've used nye oil to oil the uh, bearing uh, housing. Right, so we're all done. Yes, yeah, so we're all done. And you didn't see that, so that's why we're mentioning it. So, okay, no, good information. Okay, so this is ready to get pressed. And what we want to show you is, this is what we've been using uh, currently. Um, I guess for a little while now. Um, Ooh, this fancy little Horo tech. Yeah, it's one of our backup. Uh, it's a Watts case uh, press. You know, it's for those uh, Watts cases that ha they don't have that screw cap. It's right, more they have of to a snap. snap. And it has to be snapped equally or even, and it'll get little dings and dents. And right. <laughs> We've seen a lot of those. <laughs> and that's what this tool is. This is just a little small version. Because yeah. we like to have little, you know, backup tools, you know. Yeah, over time, you... you you get to buy nicer tools to do your job. Like, like we get these tools that we were given to us. And, and, right. And and this bowl, can I go now on this? Oh, yeah, please do. This is slightly purple in color. There's a reason for that and a fascinating story Patrick can share in a second. But if 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 we didn't have this watchmaker's cover, you, you, you can just use a salad bowl from your kitchen. Just be sure it's clean. It's not your one from lunch today or what have you. That's right. And, uh, and it can work just fine. It doesn't even have to be see-through. So, you know, we're just doing this because... Well, we've done a lot of these, and we've learned in time that it's easier just to keep our eye on the bearing, keep them covered, and this is a fancy cover we already use anyway. And the press came along, and it, it actually is a lot easier than, because remember, yeah. tell them how you used to, used to kind of put them on. Oh, yeah, you know, see, before, we've learned. See, the reason why we like this particular tool is because it has a screw feed press. Nice feel. So, yeah, it has good feel, very slow. You know, you can, you can turn it a little bit, you know, check your distance. So really precise control. Because we're not looking for pressure. We're just looking for consistency and levelness and stuff, right? That's just, right. Just helps. See, like one of the methods, I'll just share one of the methods was like we would, we would, I would put this like on a table and I'd, I'd set it right here. And then with like a, a dead blow hammer with soft faces, I would tap it. Because it they aren't that hard press no. fit. You know, no, they just need to be straightly guided in. Yeah, just guided yeah. in very carefully. But like anything, you don't have the control you do as with this press. Uh -huh. So what happens is, you know, you're tapping it and all of a sudden, the bearing <laughs> it's, it's cap it hides, right? <laughs> it went all the way into the housing. And that's really bad because then you've got to press it back out, start over again. And with any press fit parts, you really don't want to be pressing in, out, no. in, out. No, so you learn. Yeah, so you learn. And that's why we like this method, Yeah, you know, best. So we just wanted to share that. So... Okay, so let's uh, get started with this. So let me put this on its side. You want a little help? Oh, here is, let me show you this. This is what Lance is talking about, since I could show you. Yeah, if you can see, I hope the camera picks it up. But this is a really old watchmaker's uh, cover. It's you know, it's cover watch parts. Yeah, if you notice, it has a purple tint to it. And people have told us that glass doesn't do this until it's, it's over a hundred years old. Yeah, a little over a hundred years old. I'll just, it, you'll see it in old Western, old, old Western uh, buildings and stuff. This stuff. Buildings built a long time ago. Yeah. So if anybody has any additional info on that, we'd be really curious. But that's what we've been told. Well, we've been told that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what I do. Okay, let me stand up for this. You want some? Uh... Yeah, let's see. Maybe when we get just, it started? Yeah. Just pick it up. Top like. of that beautiful paint job there now. <laughs> Can make sure I'm not covering the camera view, okay. 
Okay, good. I think I've got it. Yeah. Just check. All around. Okay, good. Now it looks good. Keep going. It's a nice right there. I like it. Oh yeah, I like that. We'll try to just try to equal both sides, right? They're pretty close. Yeah, see if you notice, we're trying to match the distance. Remember, it's not critical. No. It's just visual. I just have to show it off because <laughs> this pretty pulley goes in there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now that looks really good. Yeah, and before, you know, just check it, make sure, you know, it's staying parallel on all sides. Yeah, and that wasn't a lot of force, right? No, it wasn't at all. Yeah. And see how I had really good control throughout yes. the whole process. And that's what's important. Okay, no, that looks really good. That's perfect. Okay, now we can remove our bearing cap. We are going to go ahead and wipe these one more time, though, even though they're oiled. I mean, we're just just to be sure we're sure we're just, safe. It, it doesn't hurt. It only takes a second, and you know the bearings are coming up, so don't want to mess around here. Yeah, Lance is right. Before, because you know, after we do the bearing installation and install the shaft, the spindle shaft, and all that. Okay, one of the last steps is to install the bearing caps, and when we do that, we'll ensure that the threads on, on the bearing caps and the housing are perfectly clean. For that one last, yeah. just make me feel better before I put you together thing. Yeah, because yeah, it would be a shame because remember, you know, these are both the angler contact bearings and the precision deep groove bearing. You know, they're open shields. There, there aren't, there isn't a seal or a shield. They're completely open with the grease. And what you don't want is you don't want to be screwing these on and have all those chips and and fragments, you know, then fall off and then get into the bearings because then that's going to shorten your bearing life. Mm. And, and then even worse, that's where when you turn the spindle, you're going to fill all those little fragments in the bearings. So you don't want that to happen. Okay, I think, um, yeah, I think we're done. Mm. Um, we're ready for the next section and that's where we're going to install the bearings on the spindle. All right. So we'll be back shortly. Part 3B, Section 3. Installing bearings onto the spindle. Well, I'm gonna get double excited here. Yeah. Now, you already got me excited about doing this open headstock. See? Yeah. But but now we're putting the bearings on, and that means we're heading toward the finish line. Well, yeah. we're quite a ways off yet. Sure. If you can explain that, we've got some pretty serious technical processes to get through here, but I think yeah. it's going to be exciting. So let me turn it over to Patrick. Great. No, I agree. Okay. Oh, just really quickly, you know, uh, in regards to the tools we will be using, again, that's detailed in part 3A. You know, like we use the SKF uh, bearing installation tool and things like that. And all of this is listed in our live document download from the website at activeadam.com. That's, that's true. Under documents? Oh, under Active Adam Education. Oh, smart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's let's get a closer view. Okay, before we install the bearings on the spindle, I thought it would be a good idea to look at the diagram so you can get a good mental picture of what we're trying to accomplish. So what we have is uh, we have our spindle shaft. You know, it's right there. So what we're going to do is, oh, and then the spindle housing like that. Okay. That's right. So what we're going to do first is, you notice in the front of the spindle, we have the pair of angler contact bearings, and they're in a back-to-back -back arrangement, and we'll go into details on that. So that's the first thing we're going to do is install those two bearings. Okay, once we get that completed, then we're going to insert the spindle with the two bearings on. We're going to insert it into this headstock housing but then at the same time we're also gonna you know we need to attach the belt pulley and then there's a spacer right here let me get that and then you might as well get all very the very important part yeah so what we got to do is you know we got to insert the spacer in the belt pulley that's going to go in there so as we're inserting the spindle inside the headstock housing you know, we got to insert it into the spacer, which is going to have the belt pulley. See, just like that. 
And then once we have that done, then we're gonna, yeah, um, position the headstock to where the back, the rear is up like this. And then that's where we're gonna install the deep groove bearing in the rear right here. That means everything has to be right and done in here because that's gonna lock her in there. That's right, because if you notice, yeah, if you notice right here, so let's start from the front. So, you, so you've got the front bearing cap in the front holding the angular contact bearings on this side. You've got the snap ring holding it on the other side. So that way it's gonna lock the spindle in place so it doesn't move. So it's not gonna have any axial movement, okay? And then you've got the spacer. So you've got the spacer, you've got the two bearings, you've got the spacer. And remember, so the bearings are gonna be here and you've got the inner race locked in on this side and the other bearings inner race locked in on the spacer. And then you're gonna have the deep groove bearing on this side, which we're gonna press. And then we have the spindle nut. So when we tighten the spindle nut, so we tighten the spindle nut, it's gonna push the inner race and the deep groove bearing, push on the spacer, and then push on the inner races of the angular contact bearings against the shoulder on the spindle head. And that's what's gonna, you know, when we tighten that spindle nut, that's what's gonna preload the bearings. Perfect. So perfect. Okay, so let's get started. Yeah, so don't skip a step is what we're saying. You're yeah. gonna do this just as we show you and be really careful not to skip it because once it's locked in, it's locked in. That's right. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put that aside. Okay, first thing, very important is- Always. Always oil the parts. A little nye oil. Yeah, a little nye oil. Okay. Okay, and this is very important. You, you want a good coat of nye oil or machine oil on this portion because uh, we want to assist in the pressing of the bearings. Yes. You know. It's just a little slippery film. Yeah, just. Just be careful not to wipe off your, uh, your uh, high spot. That's right, good point. Let, Let me oil. show you the high spot. Okay, so these are our two witness marks. Yeah, see right here in the front? And also, I just do it twice in case one gets rubbed off. We have one right here too. And this is where we measured the high spot on the spindle, where we measured the highest run out. Right, and we'll be cleaning those off later. You don't want to assemble it and leave them. And we're gonna clean them off, but because we're gonna clean them off, that means we'll have to, we'll be putting the, our uh, little lubricating oil on these points later. That's true. Very true. Okay, so the next step is we're gonna use our hockey puck. Okay, and we Ooh, like- Good this. day, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and we like this because, you know, it's soft, but it's also hard at the same time. So it's gonna give us the, you know, nice force. Uh, I should say a nice rigid force while not, um, causing any damage to the head of the spindle. All right, this is really true and tested with us, this method here. Yeah. Okay, so this is what I do. Okay, so what I do is the witness mark right there, I'll point that toward me. Okay. And this is very critical. Uh, we need, and I'll explain it when I get the bearings out. Yeah. Okay, so let me grab one of the first bearing. Okay. Oh yeah, I do want to explain. Okay, you can see, let's see if I can give you a better picture. I just want to show you how it looks with the grease uh, inserted. See the grease right there? Whoops. Okay, and as you can see, there's plenty of grease on both sides. And the reason why I mention this, but I wanted you to see how it looks we have the proper amount of grease in the bearing. But I want to make a point because, okay, if you remember, prior to putting, or prior to greasing the bearing, you know, we went over that chart from Barden. Okay, let me bring it real quick. Okay, oh, I remember. about the volume. Yeah, and the volume they called for was for the 7,003.50 uh, cc's. Okay, use this only as a guideline for the maximum. 
Look at this as you don't want to exceed this volume of grease. That's where the damage and the heat buildup comes yeah, from. Yeah, that's where it's really critical, right? What Lance is saying is if you put too much grease, that's where you can create heat problems. And So if you're going to do anything being, I think what if I'm understanding you right, if I'm going to do anything here, then being slightly less is more beneficial to the bearing's life livelihood than if I had tried it and put a little too much. That's right. I want to stay to the negative side here. That's right. And the reason why I mention that is because, see, it's also going to change slightly on the manufacture of the bearing. Because, see, different manufacturers may have different bearing cage designs. You know, where, you know, so, some uh, cage designs could occupy more space in this area. Well, you did a real good job getting that bead in there. I think you, you might have missed your calling as a welder. <laughs> Look at that bead. <laughs> Now you're gonna do one other little thing because this is the last time we're gonna physically be able to see inside these bearings, isn't it? That, that's true. Okay, what we need to focus on first is, okay, on these bearings, okay, there's two dots. And I think I'm gonna have to go close again. Okay, on these particular bearings, okay, it's gonna differ on every bearing manufacturer you use. Some bearings, they're gonna have markers you're gonna wanna look for on the inner and outer bearing. Sometimes it's a dot, sometimes it's an asterisk. See here, it's a triangle on the inner race. Okay, and that, what these markers mean is these are like witness marks that the manufacturer made where they measured the maximum run out on these bearings. So, so if, you, if you align, here I'll show you. See on this particular one, on the outside bearing, there is an arrow. See, on the smaller bearings, like we did for the accessory spindle. Yeah, there was no arrow. There is no arrow, so they had the same type of marker on the outside race. Oh. See, but what, so basically, like on this bearing, if I match that arrow to the triangle on the inner race, okay, in this position, it's the top that has a maximum run out. Okay. Or maximum eccentricity, which a lot of bearing manufacturers use the term. Okay. Okay. So why that's important is, I can come down again. Okay, the reason why that's important is because, see, we have our witness mark we made where we measured the high spot on the spindle. The manufacturer has made their witness marks indicating where they measured the run out, the maximum run out on their bearing. And what we have to do is, we have to position the inner race that, so that's 180 degrees from our witness mark. So directly, on the other side. So your your mission you've taught me in this over the course of time is you're trying to cancel out our high spot with theirs. That's right. Okay. So and, we're looking for perfection. Yeah, it's not a one to one, obviously. No. You know, you know, but that's that's kind of uh, what we're trying to accomplish. It's the best we're going to get for performance. Yeah, because what you don't want to do is if we were to match the marks. So if we're to match them, you know, match the witness mark we made to the witness mark the manufacturer made, we would be adding the run out between the two. Wow. And see, you don't want to do that. So that's why this is uh, really important to follow. So, okay, so remember the witness mark on the spindle is facing me. But the so, other one's going to be farthest away from you as it can get. That's right. So let's see. The inner race. Oh, now. the other thing is, I'm not sure if you noticed uh, when we started this section, but I'm wearing a loop. And the reason why I'm wearing a loop is because this is my last chance to look over the bearing very carefully and make sure there's no lint, hair, any type of foreign object. So it's just kind of like a last check. This is the last check. Yeah, too. because once we install these, especially when the other bearing gets installed on yeah. top of it, we aren't going to have a chance to look at it again. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly, okay, now it looks really clean. That's okay. No, this one passes the test. Okay, and if you do see like a, you know, a piece of lint or hair or something, you have to be very careful. You know, maybe try using a good pair of tweezers, you know, or something, but just be very careful. Okay, so here we go. It's an exciting day. Yeah. 
I think that's good. Yeah. Okay. Stand up for this. <laughs> yeah, and just so you know, you know, these bearings come with different tolerances on the internal and outside dimensional. Uh, yeah, it's an acceptable tolerance. It's yeah, it's industry acceptable. standard. Exactly. Like here, this box, let me just show you really quick. Like here, this is a good point. See this negative two and this negative three? Okay, this, this is in regards to the inner race and the outer race. So this is saying that the inner race has a tolerance of negative two microns. So it's negative two microns smaller than, uh, than what's spec for that size. And then the outside dimension is actually negative three microns smaller. So based on this, that can have some impact on the difficulty of installing sure, your bearings. Sure, it's gonna be a little bit tighter. That's it's right. It's already very precision match. That's right. So especially if you're doing multiple spindles, you'll find that, wow, these bearings went on super easy, but then you'll have another spindle where it's really difficult. Yeah, I remember at first, we first thought we did, we were doing something wrong back then. That's now we right. Know. See why he uses a dead blow hammer there. Okay, just like that. Okay. Okay, looks good. Just use my loop, make sure I hit the shoulder on the spindle. Yeah, it looks good. How's your witness mark good? Yeah, that's what I'm looking at now, so there's my witness make mark. Make sure you got no rotation. Yeah, perfect. Good. Okay, so now we do the same thing. Let me grab the other bearing. Oh, I should probably mention this, probably sometimes I get ahead of myself. Okay, we're doing a back-to-back -back, uh, arrangement on these two bearings. So what that means is, in this configuration, the faces where the writing's on the bearing, that's considered the back of the bearing. So here, let me show it here. Okay, so see how this side has the writing? Okay, that's considered the back of the bearing. And then where there's no writing, that's considered the front. So in the back-to-back -back configuration, that means the the, the writing is going to be facing each other. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. Okay. Okay, this one's... Okay, see, what I like to do is... See, because of witness... Or, yeah, because of the, their witness marks on this side... I like to use my Sharpie. Yeah, because it would get too difficult. Yeah. How are we going to pick it up and look underneath? <laughs> exactly. So I like to do So Let me... Uh... Oops, can we see? Okay, so it's right. See, it's, it's right there. Just make sure you get my loop. So, yeah, it's like to make a little dot. And this doesn't have to be like super duper precise, but that's pretty good. That's pretty close. Okay, we're good. Can I ask, did, since you put the first bearing on, do we need a little, little bit of oil to put the second one on or is it still got lubricant? Is it still got a film on it? You know what? Uh, probably wouldn't hurt just to put out just a little bit. It was so tight. I'm just wondering if it took it all with it. You're absolutely right. Good. <laughs> that's a good thing to point out. Wine doesn't hurt, so. Yeah, let's make the job easier. Okay, good. Okay, so let me make sure. Okay, I just want to make sure my witness mark is still. Still nearest you? Still nearest me. Okay. Okay, okay now before I put this on, I'm going to use my loop to just look it over really carefully, make sure there's no lint or hair or anything. Remember, all this is so important because, you know, there's no going back. 
you know, once we install these bearings on the spindle, you cannot remove them without damaging them. Okay, so that looks good. Okay, so there's the dot I made. Okay, so I'm just gonna go, okay, my witness marks right there. Perfect, just like that. Okay. Look good to you, Lance? Yeah, let me just, can I just take a look real quick? Yeah, please do. Let me just look at something here. Yeah, you know, it's always nice to have, you know, a second oh, pair of eyes it. to look. I just want to see it. See, that's, that's your back to back. I see that. Oh yeah, what Lance is showing I is... just wanted to confirm. It's always nice that second set of eyes. We've made our mistakes in the, in the 20, 20 plus years. Yeah. <laughs> So what Lance is saying, when they put the witness marks on the outside bearing races here, you'll notice it's not just a mark, but it's an arrow. And they use these arrows because this tells you where the front and the rear of the bearing is. So this kind of ensures that you're installing them correctly. I think this ties back to our part one of this video series. I think so, part one. Where we one. went through in great depth the bearings and, and about those back-to-backs. That's right. In, in a roll, set to set, the front to front. Yeah, got it. See, because in tandem, the whole yeah, thing, yeah. You see, what the tip of the arrow is indicating is that's the front of the bearing, and then this is the rear or the back. So, see, we're doing a back to back. That's right. So, I just wanted to confirm that. Oh, no, sure. You can't take them back off. So. No, you can't. So, it's so important to, you know, double, triple check, have somebody else look at it. Got all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Everything lines up. Got your arrow good. Got yeah. your 180. One right away from you, farthest away from you. That's right. Okay. Okay. And, and um, the other thing is, for for <laughs> now, if you if you notice, we're only paying attention to the witness marks on the inside bearing race, not on the outside. That's going to come uh, in the next stage. That's right. Okay. By the way, I'm being really careful because I got a camera above me as well. <laughs> right above you. Yeah, right above me. So I don't want to <laughs> hit it. Okay, so you're wondering why I'm taking a little baby taps. That's pretty good. Almost there. Home. Perfect. Okay. Hey, how do we do that? Let's do it. Oh, yeah. I could feel some of the preload. Can you yeah. just load it up? Yeah, it's loaded up. Oh, yeah, it feels silky smooth. So we're good. Okay. You want to just check your witness mark against your... Oh, yeah. Opposite of your... Okay. There, so my witness... Yep, right there. We're good. We're perfect. So this is as good as you can get it. Yeah. This is it. There's no other... There's no other secret here. Yeah. No. No. So don't fear it. Okay, we're now ready to install the spindle through the headstock housing. But before we do that, we need to prepare the belt pulley and... The spacer. Okay, Bef uh, what we need to pay attention to is you'll notice this hole is not centered with the length of the spacer and the reason for that is, okay I should back up a little bit, is what we need to do is, see we need to insert this and align this hole with the fastener hole and so when we do that, so the reason why it's important to get the direction of this correct you see see notice like when i line it up now the spacer is perfectly in center with the belt pulley but if i turn it and line the holes see how it's now off see see if i center it now the holes don't match So just uh, make sure, so that's why you want to make sure you get it the right direction. So oh. like that. Okay. So first thing we want to do is oil our spacer. Good boy. Hey. <laughs> no, because I do forget and Lance has to catch me. And remember, not a thick coat, just, just a light, thin coat. You remember, this isn't for lubrication purposes. It's mainly more 
uh, to inhibit rust and this corrosion. Is, this is going to get a little tricky here because that just doesn't go in that little pulley just like you think, huh? No. We have to earn it. See? It gets a little bit more puzzly. Yeah. So you don't want to just go ahead and insert it now. See? Okay, so we want to line everything up. Okay, so what we first have to do is, so we push, put this, and hold. So we hold the belt pulley in like this, and now we have to insert the spacer through like this. Through the dust cap there. Yeah, because if you notice, see, it's too large. It won't go through here because the dust, see the felt rings actually ride on this. That's how they do their job. That's correct. Yeah. Oh, and very important, I always like to oil just a tiny little drop here because once we install this, it gets really difficult to access the surface. Okay, and I also try not to get oil on the belt grooves uh, just because I don't, I'm just afraid if I add oil, we'll have belt slippage. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay, but on the sides, it's fine. Is this where I should bring something up about that rusty old thing? I'll bring up anything about what? Oh, yes, I know what you're going to talk about. Yeah, you know, I mean, we've done a great job. This is like factory perfect paint, factory perfect yes. parts. Everything's sparkly and perfect. Why are they putting that rusty old pulley on the, on that beautiful, basically, museum machine? Oh, yeah, some of these comments we have to reread multiple times because at first we were like, guy, we did such a great job restoring this headstock. The yes. people are saying they don't like her belt pulley. Somebody will say, 36 minutes and 14 seconds in your video, there was a... A, a rusty part. A very or... rusty part, and that's just to something you should be ashamed of with that fine <laughs> workmanship. Yeah, and it's kind of funny, but I don't blame them. It makes yeah, sense. It makes sense because because they see this color of this belt pulley, you know, it's reddish. They think it's They think this is made out of steel and it's rusted. Okay, but it's not. It's actually fabric reinforced phenolic resin. And what's really interesting is the same material that these bearing cages are made out of on these super high precision bearings. Oh, which you explained in the bearing lesson on part in part one. That's right. And if you notice, they have the same color, oh, yeah. that really dark red or dark maroon color. It's just the color of that. So those aren't color. rusted either then. No, <laughs> <laughs> but it is funny. You know, we never thought about that. It doesn't look that way to us, but on when, on you're, the watching, camera. when you're watching the shows, you do. it does look that way. Yeah, so it makes a lot of sense. So we always appreciate that comedy. One day we get one that's uh, going to be right on that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so make sure I got the direction correct. Okay, good. A little tricky. Okay, I think I have to stand up. Just okay. Just like that. There we go. See, and this is where the alignments get a little tricky with the holes and Yeah. So this is where I get my loop. And this is where I make sure I get the alignment perfect. Oops. Okay, I got it right there. Okay, now I think I got it. It's about right there. See, right now it's riding in the two felt rings. Is that correct? That's right. See? See, that's why I can turn it. So, like that. so everything's feeling right. Everything's, yeah, everything's feels feeling right. about right right now. No bearings involved yet. That's right. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, remember, uh, you know, our headstock housings here and here is already oil. Yeah. Okay. Make sure. So I got, and then I got the hole lined up top on the belt pulley. Good. Okay, here this is where you've got to pay attention is, okay, these arrows on the bearings, you just want to make sure they're aligned with each other right here. Let me see if I can get a closer view. Actually, let me make sure they're aligned. Okay, they're perfectly aligned. See how those two arrows are aligned? Okay, very important that those are aligned like that. 
canvas is a little. Okay, one drop. I just want to kind of share it between the two bearings. Okay, we. Just like that. Okay, and then, okay, so all we have to focus on is just the alignment of these arrows. You know, we don't have to align them with our witness marks. That was the witness mark is only for the inner bearing race markings. Okay. Okay. And then even, we also don't have to align these marks with any place on the housing as well. The only important thing is that they have to be aligned with each other. Okay. Okay. Okay, it should just be a tight, it's tight, but just like this, it shouldn't require a hammer. If it does, sometimes it can get a little tight and just use a small little hammer. We're just talking about a little little tap. Like see, we just have this little, this little tiny dead blow hammer as opposed to our bearing insulation dead blow hammer. See the difference? Just needs a little tap. Okay, but this went in really nice, really snug. The perfect fit I like. Okay. Okay. This is what I do is, okay, that hole. Okay, so hole in the belt pulley. Now we gotta align it to that hole in the spindle. Okay, and how I align it is this keyway right here is in the same position where that hole in the spindle is. So see, all I have to do is this position where that keyway is facing up. Can keep it like that. I should be able to position the belt pulley where the hole's facing up and it should. And the belt pulley is taking the uh, sleeve with it. That's right, okay, and there it is, right there. It's really important because this is a very special screw that's going into that into that spindle into it that's right not up against it i mean ah. a little bit of oil and again you know i placed the little tiny drop in front always in front because the oil will work its way back Okay, so this is where you have to be really careful. So what I do is I go down, just let off a little bit. You can see we're trying, I see I don't have it in that little notch yet. Okay, see there? So bring it back. See, I know it's in that notch because see the fastener's loose, but it's also won't Won't spin won't without spin. taking the, without taking the, uh, the spindle won't spin without taking the, uh, uh, pulley with it. That's right. It'll only just rock it, rock separately from one another, just That's a right. little bit. Yeah, because see, the first time I could tell the fastener was inside the hole because it stopped. I would say I was tightening it, it stopped. I loosened it about a quarter turn back, but then I was able to turn the pulley free. And you shouldn't and I knew, be able to. Yeah, yeah. I, I shouldn't be able to because, see, once a fastener's in that slot, it's going to take a few revolutions for it to come back out of the slot on the spindle. So that's how I know, you know. So now that I ensured that I'm in the whole slot in the spindle, now I can tighten it. And it doesn't have to be that tight. Just again, just snug. Okay, that's good right there. Oh yeah, that's nice and tight now. Very nice. See, and just... How does that feel? Oh, beautiful. Want to turn it? Yeah. Oh yeah, you can feel the resistance See? too. Yeah. Yeah. We always preach it, but you know, every time we do something, always give the spindle a turn. You know, make sure that you didn't do something. You maybe, you know, because if you do, if you install too many parts and then test the spindle and the spindle feels too tight, you don't know what part 
cause that problem. That's a good point. You know what I'm saying? So that's why everything we do, I test it. And so we're still good. Yeah, and it feels beautiful. It feels tight, smooth, silky Because smooth. right now, if something were wrong, we could still take this apart. That's right. That's about to change, though, isn't it? That's right. We're about ready to commit this for good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that looks really good. So, um, okay, just double check. So we got the two bearings installed here. Okay, we got the belt pulley. Okay, the next last step in this section is to install the deep groove bearing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to set up here because I first want to take a look at our deep groove bearing now. Oh, yeah. See, it's this guy right here. So let me just take a look at it with my loop. Okay, remember, this is a deep groove bearing, but it is a super precision deep groove bearing. Okay, but on these type of bearings, we don't got any marks that we have to align. Oh, okay. So, we don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Okay, there is one manufacturer, though. On these super precision uh, bearings, either ABEC 7s or 9s, you know, on this type, there's actually just one manufacturer that I've seen that marked these bearings. Wow. And that's from Timken. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And actually, I think, are we no, not this one? In the Barker, when we install the Barker bearings for the vertical. Those are Timken. Yeah, those are Timken, and you'll see the markings just like the angular contact bearings. Yeah, so don't get concerned. When you see your deep groove bearings and you know, you're trying to look for the markings for the run out, you know, don't get concerned. Most manufacturers don't put those markings oh, for okay. some reason. Well, that's good news yeah. for everyone. Yeah. A little less pressure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's good. Okay, there's no lint. Um, let me just, before I get started, let me just put a little oil. I just put a little extra because I want some oil in the threads as well right there. I think that's good. Okay. This is a two-man job right here. Yeah, see Lance has to hold this just like that. I'm just balancing it. I don't have I don't have any other function here other than just to hold it upright. That's right. Yeah, because it's it's obviously it's heavy on this side. It's gonna fall over if Lance doesn't hold it for me. Okay, and just take it slowly. You want to get a little square there first. Oh my this, little. This is a little out of sync. Yeah. Oh, thank you. See yeah, that we don't. There? We don't want that on a bearing. Oh, there you go. I'm gonna let you get a nice start. There. I think that's good. Okay. That's, yeah, that looks good. I move this out of the way for you. Okay, again, turn it. Oh, it feels great. My, doesn't that feel smooth, oh, silky that's nice. smooth? Oh, it's been a while. Yeah. It feels oh, as good as the other one does. Yeah, this is always a great feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, it shows that all the work and the effort you put into the cleaning and everything. Oh yeah, this feels great. Silky smooth. I remember, um, I keep reiterating that when you rebuild spindles with these angular contact bearings with the preload, you're gonna have that resistance. Yeah, it's not gonna spin like a top. It's not gonna go bzzz. Yeah, you're gonna be able to spin it right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, but you're gonna tell, it just You'll feel, know it. It feels tight, no play whatsoever. It's, it's, there's no sounds, yeah, there's no nothing. Sound, just silky smooth. Beautiful work. Yeah. Okay, good. That's it for this section. Um, we've, so we've got, we've got the spindle installed into the headstock housing. We've got all the bearings installed. You know, the pair of angular contact bearings or deep groove bearing in the rear. We've got the belt pulley installed on the spacer. Lined up with that screw set through all the way into the spindle. That's right. So it's a solid lock. 
That's right. It's a solid lock and the spindle feels great. We are in a very, very positive position right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay, so that's great. We're done with this section. Great. So we'll be back for the next. Part 3B, Section 4, Installing the Spindle Nut. Well, I guess we're going to get a lock on it. <laughs> <laughs> we're almost there. We're so excited, we're getting witty. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this section is focused on installing a spindle nut. But there are a few things we want to teach, and that's yes. why it has its own dedicated section. Okay, so let's take a closer look at what we need. Okay, as you notice, okay, so we've got our spindle nut, and we've got the fastener. Okay, remember, we've left the fastener out on purpose. You know, we're going to install this only after we've installed the spindle nut, because we don't want to risk damaging the threads on the spindle. Right, we don't want to change any of, any of the pressures that come on that split nut. That's in right. In its natural state. That's right. Okay. Um, you're going to need a spanner wrench. As you notice, you know, you've got these slots in the spindle nut. And these slots are really narrow. You're going to need a spanner wrench with very small little diameter pins. Okay, this particular one has 1.5 millimeter pins or roughly about 1 16th of an inch. So very small, okay? One of the things I want to mention is these are very delicate. They break off easily and they bend easily. So that's why we don't want you, that's one of the reasons why we don't want you to over tighten the spindle nut because for one, it's not necessary, but two, you'll easily damage your tool when it's not necessary. Because the preload you've taught me is already ground into the bearings. That's right, so by the manufacturer. So tightening that nut to death will change absolutely nothing in this scenario. That is correct. All, our wanting to, all we're wanting to accomplish here is to bring that nut into there tight and firm, just firm, and locking it with that screw, and she will stay where she belongs for forever. That's right. Exactly. Good point. See, I got to learn a lesson there. <laughs> Okay, what we use is, we really hate, okay, when we're tightening the spindle nut with our spanner wrench, okay, although we aren't tightening it very tight, I just hate to hold on to the belt pulley. Because oh. as you saw, the little fastener that's holding all this together is really tiny. And I just... And it's already going through three items. Yeah. Threaded through two and slipping through another, and it's got that little pin going in that in this spindle, and I, I just... I agree with that. Yeah. I know what they say, but I think we're going to go with your method. I think it's yeah. a smart move. It's worked for us over the years and probably should continue to work for others. Exactly. And this is what I use. I use these nylon jaw pliers, and these are the adjustable jaw version. Okay. And I know uh, some people may have the plier version. You know, they're the small, yeah, smaller version. Yeah, they're a little more common, I believe. Yeah, more common. See, with this pair... I can get some pretty good torque. Yeah, enough. You got a lot of distance there. Yeah, but if you're using the small pair or you just want a better grip, this is what we recommend doing. Is you first want to get some isopropyl alcohol. Okay, what we want to do is... Hey, while well, you're here, is this a good time to go ahead and clean off those uh, oh, sure. this witness is, marks for the high spots? This is a good time. Because yeah. you're going to use isopropyl, so then, then when we come back, we're going to oil them again or put the little film on them one more time. That's right. That would be nice. Yeah, so we might as well get rid of the um, the witness marks, Lance is saying. Yeah, we don't want those on there. No. You just like to hear it spin. <laughs> Oh, it just feels great. Okay, that's good. Okay, the reason why I did this now is for this front, the front uh, side of the spindle. Because what we're going to do is to enhance the grip, we're going to use, this is just regular 3M painter's tape. And what I do is I just get, you know, let's see, maybe this should do about here. Okay, so about, didn't have to critical, about the length of the spindle. Okay, so we're going to hold it this way, so, okay, so we're going to just put it here, the end. Okay, 
And the tape's not to protect the spindle because you're using a nylon plier as it is. That's right. It's just for a better gripping mechanism. That's right. And it really does help. Yeah. Actually, sometimes it helps a little too much. Yeah, we don't want to grip it that hard. That's we're not trying to... Remember, we're not trying to tighten too much. Here. Yeah, that's why we actually don't recommend doing this technique uh, during the disassembly. You know, we kind of left this part out because you know, people will, you know, use a spanner wrench because this will grip so tight they're going to shear these pins right off. So at this point, you know, if it's if the spindle nut's stuck, uh, you're better off using the other technique we showed with the little two ounce hammer. Yeah, we've already have when we've confessed we're not the most perfect people in the world. This isn't our first spanner wrench in this size, is it? No, ha, I think. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, we'll be honest with you. This is probably a third or fourth pair. I thought I was gonna buy them by the case. <laughs> <laughs> and these aren't cheap either. No. Yeah, I think yeah these are German. So you know yeah, and getting and finding this size is almost impossible with these little pins. So just believe us, we do we do bend these yeah. and shear them off ourselves. So that's why we're we're, we're teaching you a we, lesson we, we learned. Yeah, we know a whole lot about what not to do. So <laughs> yeah, okay. So this side though is we can. I like to put a little drop here, maybe a little bit on the threads on the just at the start there. Yeah. Yeah. And then even on the spindle nut, yeah, we want to make sure everything's oiled. Yeah, you need to thread this nut on in reverse to go forward like you've taught us already? Or does this one just go right on? Yeah, that's a technique I always use. It's really a brilliant uh, one. On, on any fine, because this is a really fine thread, and even the bearing caps, the thread's really fine. So what I do is make sure I get the right side okay so I put the spindle nut on for example and then I go backwards I actually caught it right right away but see when you go in reverse you actually feel the thread the threads engaging because it like snaps into place see so let's see if I can get it again okay right there there it was so now I heard I, it click yeah see you hear it click and then that way I know I'm not crossing threads because you cross your threads, which is very easy to do. Especially in this fine thread. You're yes. Not gonna, it's hard to feel that. Yeah, so this is something we use for fine threads. So it's worked for us. It's going on nice, huh? Oh, very nice. Smooth. Okay. Okay, hold it there. This is a one-man job. You're trying to feel for it. That's right. We're not trying to go to town here. It's a nice feel. Okay. Okay, and then you can see the spindle spins just ever so slightly. So, you know, it gives. I think that's really good. Yes, I even turned the tape off. So. Notice he's testing the spinning again. Yeah, notice. Because he's got it all. This is actually, other than putting a little lock screw in, she's done. You know, a couple covers. But, I mean, she's, what 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 you feel is done. That's right. A little extra? Just little. making, I just like to double check. Remember, not. Oh, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's good. Don't want to overdo it. Oh, and it feels, see, it shouldn't mm -hmm. change. Still oh, feels yeah, great. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's mine. Yeah. Okay, now you gotta be really careful taking the tape off. Cause, you know, we got the bearings right there. So just take your time. Yeah, because the bearing and some nuts protectors are not on yet. Yeah, see, the reason why I didn't have the pliers tight enough, it's kind of hard because I'm in front of the camera trying to get it in view. And um, so you want to get a get a fairly good grip. You don't want the pliers to slip on the tape. But that's what happened with me. Yeah, I did observe a little spinning going, remember? Right? Yeah. Okay, and then, so we want to clean off any residue from the tape with the isopropyl alcohol. And again, we're using 99.9% isopropyl because uh, any other percentage is going to have water content 
which we don't want. No, water's not our friend here. Not on this application. No. I just want to make sure my um, we don't have any tape residue or anything. And you're using one of those uh, laboratory Kim Kim pads, Kim wipes. Yeah, this isn't a paper towel. This is a special. They call it um, um they call it a Kim wipe. Yeah, laboratory right? grade Kim wipe. And it's it's entirely. They actually package this in a clean room, and it's 100% lint free, which That's is right. very critical. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and before we forget, let's go ahead and oil it. That's a good boy. <laughs> there we go. Okay, just let me put my loop. I just want to check, make sure. This is it. That this is it, because we're gonna, the next section we're gonna focus on, it's actually our last section is putting the bearing caps on. Yep. Okay, now that's good. Perfectly clean. Can we go ahead and put our box oh, yeah. screw in. Now we can put the little fastener. Should be good. Oh, almost forgot. Remember my uh -huh. this little bit of oil. Just a tiny bit. Okay, again, not very tight, just snug. Because if we get too tight, okay, what that's doing, remember, is bringing in those two, because remember, there's a slot they make in the nut, so the two pieces of metal are coming together as we tighten. Because the second half is threaded, and the first half is just open. So it's pulling it in, right? Yeah, it's we... pulling it in. It's pulling both of them together, yeah. and then, you know, causing that friction. Sandwiching on the yeah, threads Yeah, on the there. threads. And if you go too tight, you will damage the thread. Yeah, there's just no need to. Yeah, there's no need to. It's good. Good so is just, good. Just go snug. Okay, just like that. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, and again, just do one last check. Make sure it spins freely. At this point in the installation, the spindle assembly itself is 100% completed. Because, you know, the bearing caps, which we're going to do in the next section, you know, that's just... Uh, you know, to make it, ensuring that the bearings themselves are protected from, you know, grit and the environment. That's right. So okay. your end result is actually complete. Yeah. So what you feel here, that's the end result. So at this stage, it should feel silky smooth with that little bit of resistance we talked about, which is just due to the preload. And, you know, uh, when we do the break-in procedure, it will loosen up a little bit because, you know, the uh, grease will settle. Oh, okay. You know, but but for right now, the the spindle should feel silky smooth. If it doesn't, then that's where you've got to diagnose, you know, what caused it. And that's why we tell you, you've always you always want to, you want to test the spindle after each step. You know, after you do every little thing, test it so that way if something changes, you know, you can always you'll, go you'll back have one developed step. you'll have developed a feel for it. If if something's changed, you're going to feel it throughout the building process. You're going to go, "Hmm, that got a little harder after that last little work I did, and That's it, was, right. it was smoother before. That, exactly, and see, and if you're checking it, you know, at every step, you can think, okay, well, it was that particular part where this got really stiff, or where it's binding? You know, sometimes it'll bind. You know, yeah. it'll be smooth, but it's binding, or just something like that. You know, sometimes it's just not something's not seated. You know, maybe when you installed the bearings, you just didn't quite seat the bearings good enough. So very important, but yeah, so we're good to go. Um, so this section's complete. Uh, we'll be back with our last section. It's gonna be exciting. Yeah, so we'll be back. Part 3B, section five, installing bearing caps. Oh boy, well I'm getting giddy and a little bit excited. <laughs> me too. And you know what's exciting me most? is that we're running out of parts to put together on this spindle, meaning only that we're getting nearer to a good break-in time. Yeah, it's hard to believe. After all those parts we started with, 
Let's take a look at him. We're down to four parts. So what we have is we've got the two bearing caps, the one for the rear and the front of the spindle, and then we've got the slinger, and then we've got the slinger cover. So what we're going to do first is before we get to this, we're actually going to install the rear cover first. Oh, let me um, talk about the tools you're going to need for this section. Perfect. Okay. Uh, for the bearing caps, you're going to need a larger spanner wrench. Okay. And this one has pins that are three millimeter or about roughly one eighth of an inch. Okay, and yeah, that's, since everything on 11 is, is imperial. Is imperial. But three millimeter pins will work. Okay. And see, that fits perfectly just like that. And this works on both sides. Okay. Uh, we're actually, we love our homemade tools. So this is what we're going to use. Okay? A lot of love went into this. Yeah. Okay, you're going to need a little dead blow hammer. Okay. And then you're going to need a 13 16th inch deep socket. Okay. Deep head socket. And we'll explain why you're going to need this. <laughs> Not for tightening. No. You're going to use it for another purpose. And I think that's everything. Okay. So let's get started. Um, okay. As you notice, okay, we've got our felts and the felt rings already pre-installed. You do. Which we did off camera. And so I'm going to start with this now, he one. He doesn't need any oil here. That's right. Okay. Uh, we've already oiled the interior of that. Of that. Or where the bearings at the housing and the threads right there before it we've already oiled all that so that so the oil's there so it's just going to track onto these caps because these are just soft aluminum not requiring any kind of oil that's right and then what i always do on the fine threads i always first go reverse to make sure i'm catching the threads same sometimes it gets tricky yeah, these fine threads are really hard. Okay, right. Which means this procedure right there. is really important. See, I just, you can feel, when you go backwards, you can feel it click into place. And then you know you're safe to turn yeah, forward. Yeah, because it'll easily cross thread. Oh, destroy it immediately. This is a soft aluminum. This isn't the same as that steel nut on the steel spindle. That's right. That wasn't so, that's a little more giving. This is a, a really got to be right. That aluminum will, will uh, really get the threads out of pitch. That's right. Okay, and just snug, not, don't over tighten. It's not this. going anywhere. Yeah, it's not holding anything. It's just uh, shielding the bearing. Okay, so that's done. Again, you know, after we did that, I want to make sure the spindle moves freely. Nothing's binding or, you know, I didn't do anything. And that's it for the reverse of this spindle. This is it. The, the, the next is the front. The front has a little more complications because we get into that, as we covered, I believe, in part one of this series, the opening. Yeah, yeah we the covered slinger. The slinger. Well, if you didn't know what one was, we didn't know in our early days there was an old school way of us putting a seal to yeah. protect the bearings. Yeah, we didn't know what this was uh, until we started rebuilding spindles. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this one uh, is a little multi-step procedure. Okay, so we're first going to install the bearing cap in the front, just like we did on the rear one. Okay, but after we do that, we then need to press slinger on top it's just a it's a very light press fit and that's a steel ring this that this yeah. is an aluminum nut that's a steel ring yeah and that slinger it's just a light press fit and that's what we're going to use the socket for the socket's going to allow us to press it okay and then after that's done then we need to press the slinger cover on that's where the drain is at that's right and, and again and this is metal that's right this is metal and this is really important you'll notice there's an opening just one opening and that opening has to point down because see what happens is if debris grit foreign material anything gets you know past this uh spindle head uh it's going to hit the slinger the slinger is going to sling it off off and into these walls yeah into these walls right here yeah and then gravity is going to cause it to fall down through the slot so that's why the slot has to point down. We've seen that slot point everywhere but down. Oh yeah, we've seen the slot up sideways. <laughs> and that's really bad because you know if you've got any debris or anything building going, up, building up, it's gonna build up and it's not gonna be able to exit. 
And that's a bad thing because eventually it's going to build up and make its way into the bearings. It is. Yeah. So very important. Okay. So first thing I want to do is let me oil my slinger. Just a light coat. That's it. Okay, remember we've already oiled both sides of the spindle mm -hmm. ends. Okay, so there should be generally. They've had their witness marks removed. So that's they're right. All, they're all good. Because we're getting down to it's gonna start running out of space, so <laughs> that's right. And we're wrapping this up, so there's no need for witness marks anymore. Okay, so same method. Let's find the thread going reverse. Oops. right there i heard it yeah Click. very faint but you can hear it it's you can of, definitely feel it too it's one of patrick's greatest tricks <laughs> well i've crossed threads before and yeah when, oh, i hate that once you've done that <laughs> it's worth every second okay, okay now this one's important okay again not super tight but this one's important to make sure it's really snug because this is holding in this pair of bearings right here so you've got the snap ring on this side and then you've got this bearing cap that you want to make it snug and that's what's going to keep those bearings in place and you don't want any movement whatsoever. So. Okay. Okay, again, always test the spindle. Okay, it feels good. Of course you know. I, I gotta get my feel in there. I just love it. Oh, that is nice. Oh. Isn't that nice? Yes. Of course, this is our favorite spindle, so we're getting so excited, you see. Oh, yeah. It's our favorite model, I mean. Okay. Make sure the direction lands right here it should point outwards, you know, not in inside, but outside of the headstock. So just like this. Okay. So maybe just give it a light tap on a hold it. Sure. Again, very light. Yeah, nothing. So it's in there. Okay, so that's good. Okay, looks really good. Oh, that game. spinning action. Test it. Okay, perfect. Oh, I see Patrick's going to use some custom tools for this next step. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Okay. You know, we've just installed the slinger. And, you know, we used that socket we showed you to install the slinger. And that's perfect for that purpose. But for the next part, which is a slinger cover right here. Okay, we can also use the socket as well. Uh, and if you do that, I just want to show you what we would recommend because it's fine to use and that's what we used to use to press this part in. Okay, what you want to do though is what we used to do is we used to get painter's tape and just apply. How do you used to do it? Actually, Lance would do this <laughs> procedure. Yeah, I'd place the painter's tape just over the entire, make a square out of it and then just trim that, that inner diameter out with a little exacto blade. Oh, okay. Uh, the kind like you have right there on the table. Okay. I okay. actually used that one one time. Great, okay. Yeah, and then that way when we would use a socket, because you know, we'd be pressing it in like that. See, cause this is the blocking finish and we don't want to damage the finish. And then after we would press it in, I would just peel that tape off and then it looked great. But as you know us, we like to make custom press tools because it's just, uh, and you know, we make them out of Delrin because Delrin is that perfect material to not damage the parts. And that's what we did here. So it basically replaces the socket. See, it has- It's a lot. Well, we got more area to work with, see, and it's just a lot safer because it's not gonna mar anything. Yeah, it's not gonna mar anything. And see, it works perfect. And it's a lot more solid to hit on too. I like yeah. the feel, especially with the dead blow hammer. Exactly. 
And see, we could have used it to install the slinger. We designed it for that. But we wanted to show the socket method just in case that's the method you're going to use for this procedure. Okay, so uh, we're going to use it now to install the cap. But first, what we're going to do is I need to oil this first. Very so good. Let me do that. Little nye oil going on over there. Yeah. Just a little. Yeah, just a little. Doesn't take much at all. Let me just wipe the excess off. Okay. Okay, what I first like to do is I like to get it started uh, with my fingers. Okay, and while I do this, okay, remember, okay, we have that exit hole right there in this cover. And we want to position that to where it's directly facing down from the spindle. Okay, so very carefully that's what I'm going to do. Right, it relies on gravity, isn't that right? That's right, because, you know, if there's any grit, uh, debris, or anything that gets inside, we want that slinger to sling it off and then with gravity exit that hole. Okay, I think that's good right there. So I got that good. And I just really carefully... Got that alignment issue. Yeah, you want to watch, right? Yeah, see, so that's where you just want to just go around... And um, you may well get it started with your fingers at first, and then they'll get really hard. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I mean, um, so you got that? Yeah. See? So yeah, just make sure. See if it was if it's crooked like that. If we attempt to press it in like that, it's gonna press in in a slant. And it's going to be crooked. So definitely start off where it's parallel with the bearing cap. Okay. Okay, here's the really important thing. Okay, if you notice when we when we had pressed in the slinger, we used that hockey puck as our platform where we put the spindle end on it. And then we tapped in the slinger. Okay, and that was fine because, see, the slinger attaches to the head of the spindle. So when we're tapping that, that's tapping directly onto the spindle. You know, it comes down here and is being secured by this hockey puck. Okay, the problem is, is we can't use the same method for the cover, though, because the cover isn't touching the spindle at all. See, it's getting secured inside this bearing cap, which is attached to the headstock housing. Yes, it is. You see... So if we were to press this using this method, we would be applying force on the headstock housing through our brand new bearings through, and then through the spindle. And see, that's a big no-no. <laughs> you don't, especially brand new super precision bearings, we don't want to do Even that. Even as light as this little cover is, it's just not worth the risk to those very, very precision bearings. That's right. So what we do instead is we just get anything you know i think this was just a scraps piece of delrin you know just with a hole and what this will allow us to do is allows us to secure you know the headstock assembly without touching the spindle so see it just goes just like that and see plenty of room where the spindle end doesn't touch the table so see look at it see now we're securing the bottom of this bearing cap which is attached to the spindle housing so see now we aren't touching the spindle at all so now we can just use our little custom tool okay here's the other thing when i press in this slinger cap i don't like to press this in uh flush I like to leave about about one millimeter. Okay, this isn't critical, but I like to just leave a little bit out because I found on some headstocks, if you press it in too far, it will touch that slinger in there and it'll cause problems. Oh yeah, we don't want that. So yeah, you don't want that. You know, and it doesn't have to go flush. So here, let's okay, let me push this in, press this in a little bit. See, it just it just takes a little, doesn't take much at all.
Let me just take a look with my loop. Actually, I think that's perfect. Hear me. See, that's a perfect distance right there. That looks really, really nice. Taste and of course, does it still spin? Okay, yes, very important. You know, like we've been preaching, every time we install a new part, we've got to give the spindle spin and it still feels silky smooth. Yeah. Great. You want to give it a try, Lance? Okay. Yeah, so see how it feels to you. Ooh. Nice. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I could, I could use that all day. Okay, yeah, and this test is actually the most important because at this stage, we've installed all the spindle-related parts. So anything that was going to restrict on this spindle is now attached caps, covers, exactly. uh, dust shields, uh, felts, the, the little slinger, the that's slinger right. ring, the whole thing, both inside and outside on those felts. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, so this was a big accomplishment. If you reach the stage and your spindle spins You free, should be sounding as positive as we do right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Great. That's it. Okay, the only thing, uh, the only thing that's missing to make this 100% complete are the little, the two bolts right here and then the pins. And that's what holds this down onto the lathe bed. Perfect. Okay. But, um, but that's really easy. That's pretty self-explanatory. But other than that, this is 100% done and it's ready to go. To oh, remember, this is a fused belt too. It's not like it needed a belt put on before we assembled that's it. That's right. It's a fused belt. Just so you right. guys know. It's not like, oh, right. I forgot to put the belt on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this part's completed. The next part is part four uh, for the break-in procedure. That's where I go to town. Part 3B, section six, because Patrick doesn't know what 100% of anything means, apparently. <laughs> so when it comes to coming to me, it wasn't 100%, was it, Patrick? Yeah, I don't know why I did that, huh? Oh, <laughs> they want to brush it off. Just brush it off on me there. <laughs> okay, I admit. I said, I said this headstock's 100% completed with the exception of a couple of parts. A couple. <laughs> so I said, okay, you got it. So we're back to wrap up this, uh, this part and I'm gonna install the remaining pieces and it will then be 100% completed. Uh -huh. So yeah, so what we have here are the remaining parts. Oh, now wait, now if it's gonna be complete, that means I'm gonna get it back and I get to go do the uh, break-in. That's right, in part four. Oh boy, I wonder what I'm gonna get out of that. Okay. <laughs> and, um, but you know, it, the, the headstock feels beautiful. You know, the still, the, the smoothness is just great. So we're really happy with, with the outcome of the spindle rebuild so far. So we'll, yeah, so we'll, we'll see what happens with the break-in procedure. Okay, so we have here our, okay, let me show it. Yes, yeah, so you can kind of get a good picture in your head. What we're going to be doing. Um, let me get my pointer. Okay. Okay, we're going to be installing these parts right here. Okay, and these parts are the parts that hold the headstock down on to the lathe bed. And there's really, there's two sets of parts. And as you can see here, um, each set contains three parts. And let me show you the bottom. Oh, these, oh I get it. So, so can I grab one? Yeah, sure. Okay, so these little T bolts here are are what goes in along that that T slot of the lathe bed. That's correct. And that's what holds the head down on there. That's right. Oh, well, same thing I do with the cross slides and stuff. That's right. Okay. And as you can see, there's two holes. There's see there we got two holes in the bottom and two holes on the side. And really, it's pretty simple. You know, we there, uh, so each set gets one spring. I call it a hold down clamp and then an eccentric screw. And what the eccentric screw does, you see the eccentric screw actually goes in this hole on the side, okay? So what happens is it works like this. So see when you, and I'll demonstrate it when it's all put together too. But see when you turn this, this is what forces the clamp to go inside the headstock, which is pulling the headstock onto the bed. It's really neat. 
Yeah, it really is. Okay. And um, so here, I'll show you real quick. So you can see even on the diagram, see we've got the spring, we got to insert first. Then we got the, the clamp. I call it the clamp. The, um, Levin calls it the binding bolt. And then once we insert that, then we put in the eccentric screw, which they just call it eccentric. And that's it. So we're gonna do both of those. And then after that's completed, then we've got one last part, which is this index pin right here. And this is what, uh, this is used to index the, the belt pulley. So, cause the belt pulley on the side, there's like a metal strip. Yeah, there and, is a little metal, little thin little metal plate that we had, we actually put oil on that before we started. Exactly, saw it. a plate with a whole bunch of holes. Yeah. And the holes, you know, um, they're indexed. So it's really nice. That's what, and see this pin right here is actually this part right here. And so you just push, it's just a soft press fit. So you can you just push it and pull it with your fingers and you just push it right into that plate. And that holds the belt pulley in, you know, in and a locks position. the spindle. Exactly. Right where it's at. That's correct. And that's why we didn't, let's see how small and frail that is. That's why you didn't want them to use that to hold the spindle for you when you were putting it together. That's why I'm glad you mentioned that because this Remember first, that? that's the first time we've shown this part. See, we were concerned that, see how fragile that little pin is? It's really tiny. Can yeah. you see that there? Can you want to flip that on? Yeah, sure. Here. It's really tiny. Whoops. Okay, I'm in there. See how small that pin is? And that just goes in that little metal plate of that pulley. So we'll... Yeah, and see what we were concerned with was when working on that uh, spindle nut, either tightening it or loosening it, we, didn't, we really don't advise holding on to the belt pulley and then, you know, working on the spindle nut because, um, or no, actually, we actually recommend that as opposed to using the index pin. See, because if we were to use an index pin to lock, lock this and then play with the spindle bolt, that means this little fragile pin is what's holding the spindle yeah, in place. It's not much and there. That's just, yeah, not much there. And still, they're still concerned, as we showed you earlier, we, we're still concerned with the little set screw as well. They got two fragile parts yeah. there. That's a good point. That second yeah. one's really important. That little pin, remember we put that down through that's, that, through all through three pieces to get into that hole of the spindle. That's right. So just something, you know, things you got to keep in mind not to push it too far because you will break things. Okay. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is what Lance always reminds me to do, oil the parts. That's that nye oil. Okay. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is, okay, as you see here, I have a cotton swab and we use these a lot, really useful. And what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to, yeah, with our nye oil, it's going to place a few drops, make sure one drop at the tip. Okay. Yeah, there's a blind hole down there, huh? That's right. After this though, can, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay, I know what you're gonna say. So <laughs> I just wanna- It's really neat. Yeah, lubricate the crevice, you know, the top of the hole and the sides really well. Okay, and don't forget the side right here. See? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And see, this is really important because, you know, if, if you cleaned all the parts like Lance did, see, when Lance cleans all the parts, he strips, you know, the parts super clean. So it's, so we've got to make sure we re-oil everything. Because that's a big problem we we find all the time is when we disassemble headstocks that we've never rebuilt before, these components are always rusted for some reason. Yeah, and the other reason they come back to Patrick so spotless and clean with no oil or anything on them is so they don't gather dust and specks and things in critical areas. That's right. He'll oil it right as he needs to, as he's going to assembly, as he's doing right now. So. That's right. And then that, this will be installed after this. So for testing purposes. And so, yeah, right. That's right. Okay. And just a really light coat. And if you notice, I already got in the cotton swab and I got the inside holes right here. So this whole thing should be well oiled. Can okay, just... Oh yeah, you'd hear it if I if you didn't oil those two little holes. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> I would. <laughs> I wait to trap him. <laughs> okay, 
And especially on this eccentric part right here, nice to get some oil right there too, since that, you know, that binds with the hole right here. Yeah. So very important that it's well oiled there. Okay, I think, okay, I think that's good. Okay, so the first thing I do is bring it like this. Okay, make sure my, okay. Make sure I have no obstructions. Okay, those go in nice and easy. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is put the springs in. I'll do one at a time. Yeah. So one spring in there. Okay, and then you want to, okay, put in the clamp and make sure the hole is facing up with this hole. See, so just like this. See, and it's, you can see it's now spring loaded. So what we're going to do now is we're going to push in this clamp and we should be able to see it just drops right in. Okay, just like that. That doesn't usually happen though. No, that was that was lucky. That one went in. Usually you have to make a little adjustments. And, yeah. Because they're just crossing each other in there and it's blind to us to see it. That's right. Yeah, see? Well, there it goes. There it goes. Okay. That was nice. Okay, and here, let me demonstrate it for you. I believe this is a 532. Yeah, it's a 532. Yeah, because as you say, everything on 11 is imperial. That's correct. Okay, and here, let me um, let me get a close up view just so you can see it when I. It's pretty neat. It's gonna pull it in and push it out, right? Yeah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See how it goes in. See, and you want you know just test them, make sure. Oh yeah, that one goes in and out. See that. Okay, perfect. They both feel very smooth, just like what we want. Okay. Good. Okay, so that part's completed. Now we just have, um, did I oil this? I don't think I oiled the index pin. I don't know, but I would have complained anyway. <laughs> if you're unsure. When in doubt, shout. <laughs> Of course, I'm getting excited. Number one, this is our favorite spindle style. And number two, I get to do the break-in next, and I'm getting a little bit antsy about it. Oh, you know, yeah. That's a big process, and it, it, I hope it's, uh, we're pretty sure everything's going to come out real well. That's right, because, you know, there's, there's no celebration yet oh, until no. it passes the break-in. Okay, and there's that hole right there. And just... It just, oh, it's just a really soft press fit. See, just like that. And just gently turn it. It just gently turn it. See? Locks the it spindle. Locks it in. locks the spindle in. It locks the... Yeah, see the belt pulleys lock. Spindle lock. It's locked. all locked. And see, so just mm -hmm. pull it out a little bit. And now it's free again. So that's it. So now I can say we have a 100% completed headstock. I guarantee it now. I made sure myself and I get to go to do the break-in and we're so, we're kind of getting a little bit excited because it's going to be fun. So, oh. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. As watchmakers and micro machinists, Patrick and I thank you for following along with us while we take this journey. We look forward to bringing you another exciting show shortly.